Good morning. morning. Welcome to St. Mark's Lutheran Church. And thank you for coming out today in this this kind of yucky, yuckyish weather. Uh, But we're glad that you're with us worshiping today. Um, We're doing things a little bit different as far as the church calendar. Uh, not, Not too much. Yesterday was the festival of Epiphany. So uh, January 6th uh, is Epiphany, and that's the day, of course, we remember the visit of the wise men. Um, the wise men did not, were not, did not come to see Jesus uh, at his birth like the shepherds did. There was at least a little bit of time in between, and we know that from the Gospel of Matthew. It talks about um, the, the wise men entering a house. So we know there's at least a little bit of time in between. So the church um, has given a, a festival day just for the wise men, which is Epiphany. So we're going to celebrate Epiphany today. That will be our lessons uh, and the focus of my sermon. Uh, and then today is actually another festival day called the Baptism of Our Lord. So that marks the beginning of Jesus' ministry. So that festival day we will celebrate next week. And then the following week, we'll go back to our normal lectionary schedule. So I don't know how closely anybody follows that schedule, but we're just kind of moving things a little bit. Uh, So today we're going to celebrate Epiphany. We're only one day late, and then next week we'll celebrate the baptism of our Lord. And of course, that marks the beginning of uh, Jesus' ministry. A few other announcements for today. Uh, There will be, once again, a free will offering uh, for the family who uh, sadly lost their home last month. Uh, So we'll be passing around that plate again. If anybody would like to make a contribution, uh, you're welcome to. Um, And then I believe we'll be also, the church with the outreach committee is going to be making a contribution too. So uh, it's just one way we can help uh, assist that family in our area. Uh, the other thing, I would like to ask for prayers uh, for Betty Freshour and her family. Uh, sadly, her brother James passed away this past week. James Balker. Did I? Balker? Balker? Okay, Balker. Okay. I'm going to need to be practicing that because um, this Wednesday will be the service. It will be here and I will be officiating. So that's at 10 o'clock Wednesday morning. Is there a visitation at 9? Is there? Okay, I forgot. And I also, while I'm thinking of it, the funeral home asked if the church could be open by 8 o'clock. So that should be no, okay, good. Uh, I forgot to mention that earlier uh, to our volunteers. But this Wednesday at 10 o'clock will be the service for James. He went by Jim, but uh, his service will be here, followed by a lunch. Uh, I'm not sure we might need volunteers to help with that. And then after the lunch at 1.30, we're going to go to the cemetery in Middletown at 1.30. So that's going on uh, this Wednesday. But I do ask that you keep uh, Betty and her family in your prayers. And his, well, James's wife, uh, Carolyn, as well, uh, with the whole family. So that's going on this week. And I think that's it for this week. Now, next Sunday, again, we're celebrating the baptism of our Lord. After church, I'm going to have uh, what I'm calling a temple talk. Uh, I, I have suggested two, suge- two changes, two possible changes. Uh, these are just suggestions. One is to offer both wine and grape juice for Holy Communion. And the other is uh, to um, purchase a processional cross. So um, I will say both of these changes are very common in the Lutheran church. So it's it's very normal in Lutheran congregations. But I know they'd be different for St. Mark's. So I don't want to just make a change. I want to make sure the congregation's okay with it. So I thought I'd um, take time to kind of present why I would like to make these changes and see if the congregation's okay with it. And uh, if the congregation says, yep, sure, then we'll go ahead. And if the 
congregation uh, is hesitant, then we can wait. Uh, you know, we cannot make those changes. But again, I do want, they are my suggestions, and uh, they're very common in the Lutheran church. Um, but I know, like I say, it'll be something brand new for here at St. Mark. So like I said, I wanted to kind of let people know why I'm suggesting this and see what people think. So we'll do that next week. And then I think that's about it. There's a few other things coming up, like youth group on the 21st and a bingo day the 20th. But I think that's uh, most of my announcements. Are there any other announcements for the good of the congregation? Yes, Linda. Today is David Axline's birthday. That's right, it is. It is. I, I did see that in the newsletter. So happy birthday to David Axline, who's, yep, today is his birthday. So. So, someone asked if you're 29. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, a good, that's a good response. So we hope you have a good day, and uh, you're starting the day off right by coming to church. <laughs> so thank you. I forgot about that. Forgot to mention that. Any other announcements for the good of the congregation? Okay, well then we prepare our hearts for worship with the prelude. I invite the congregation to please rise in body or spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sins, Receive your forgiveness and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you 
and given ourselves into the power of sin, we are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a call and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, also with you. and let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, you revealed the incarnation of your Son by the brilliant shining of a star. Shine the light of your justice always in our hearts and over all lands, and accept our lives as the treasure we offer in your praise and for your service. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Let 
lesson for the first Sunday of Epiphany will be Isaiah, taken from Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 through 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the people. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together, they come to you. Your sons shall come from far away. Your daughters shall be carried, by, shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice. Because of the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you, the wealth of the nation shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you. The young camels of Midian and Ephra, all of those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim and praise the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Let's now read uh, responsibly Psalm 72, verses 1 through 7 and 10 through 14. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son, that he may rule your people righteously and the poor with justice, that the mountains may bring prosperity to the people and the hills in righteousness. Let him defend the needy among the people, rescue the poor and crush the oppressor. May he live as long as the sun and the moon endure for one generation to another. Let him come down like rain upon the mowing field, like showers that water the earth. In his, in, his, in his time may the righteous flourish, and let there be an abundance of peace till the moon shall be no more. May the kings of Tarshish and the Isles pay tribute, and the kings of Sheba and Shea give offer gifts. May the kings bow down before him, and all the nations do him service. For the kings deliver the poor who cry out in distress. They oppress those who have no helper. He has compassion on the lowly and poor and preserves the lives of the needy. From oppression to violence, he redeems their lives and precious and mercy in his sight. The second lesson is taken from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. This is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Christ Jesus for the sake of the, you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given to me for you, and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation. And I, as I wrote above in these few words, a reading in which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ in former generations <laughs> This mystery was not made known to mankind, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles, the prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, the share and shares in the promise of in God in Jesus Christ through the gospel. Of this gospel I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given to me by the working of his power. Although I am very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the bount boundless riches of Christ and to make everyone see what it is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things. So through the church, the wisdom of God in its rich variety shall now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This is in abundance with the eternal purpose that he has cre carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. I invite the congregation to please rise for the reading of the gospel. 
the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? Who we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all of Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler, who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Please be seated. And let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Last Sunday, it was my turn to teach Sunday school. And the lesson for that day was Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. So, the visit of the wise men. And in the book we use for Sunday school, there, there are only several questions uh, that the leader of the discussion uh, can use. And I tend to use most of them. Well, last week, one of the questions was, how do you react when you are faced with change? How do you react when you are faced with change? Now, I think this is a good question for, for everyone. And in our class last week, I think most of us said we normally do not like it when we are faced with change. It's not something that we're um, open to very often. I know for me, I normally have a negative reaction when I'm faced with change. But I, will remind, I often have to remind myself that much of the time, the change that, that is taking place is for the best. So change is often good. However, that's not always the case. But change, either way, change is something that we should always approach with an open mind, especially if it's possible that God is behind the change, especially if it's possible that God is behind the change. In our gospel lesson, we find a king and some wise men who are faced with the possibility of change, and they both respond to that change differently. Now, King Herod is a man that we know a good, a good amount of information about because of not only the Bible, but also because of other historical documents. The wise men, on the other hand, are a different story. As I was saying in the Sunday school class last week, the Bible gives us very little information on the wise men. And there is very little uh, written about them outside of the Bible. So there's a little bit, but not, not much. Uh, we do not know exactly how many wise men there were. There were at least two, but we don't, we don't know for sure uh, how many there were. We do not know their names. Starting in the 5th century, the names Casper, Melchor, and Bathazar were assigned to them. And those, me those names mean king in various languages. So those names, we don't, they don't appear until about the 5th century. All of them mean king, but most scholars believe that they were not kings. 
We also do not know for sure where they're from. They're definitely from the East. They're definitely Gentiles. They're not Jews. But where are they from? Well, where in the East are they from? I grew up being taught that they were probably from Persia, which would be modern-day Iran, and many scholars still believe that. I often, often read that. Um, however, it's very possible that they were from the kingdom of Nabate, which today would be modern-day Jordan. So uh, that's, that's another real possibility that they're actually from, from Jordan. We also do not know their occupations. It would make sense that at least one of them was an astronomer. And it's widely believed that they may have been priests. But they were definitely educated. These are Gentile, educated Gentiles, which makes them different from the shepherds. Now, if I'm being honest, I must confess that I wish that St. Matthew would have given us more information about the wise men although I am grateful that he told us about their visit because this is the only book of the Bible that mentions these men. So they only appear in Matthew. Our lessons for today, especially the, uh, our first lesson, the psalm, kind of hint at their arrival. So I do think there's some, maybe some prophecy there, but Matthew is the only one that actually tells us about this visit. So I'm glad he included this. Now, at the same, um, what's only, I always say this about the Bible. I always wish the Bible gave us more information. I kind of wish the Bible was a lot bigger <laughs> or contained more volume so we could, we could learn even more. But what's important to remember is that St. Matthew and the Bible, the Holy Spirit, <coughs> The Bible always gives us what we really need to know. So the information that's given to us in the Bible is always what we really need to know. So we are told that these wise men, they notice a change in the sky. They discover a star, and they appear to be aware of prophecy regarding this star. So being educated and open-minded, they decided to investigate this star. They wanted to know more. What change is taking place? Who is this king of the Jews? So they were open to a change happening in the world, and they wanted to learn more. Well, once the chief priests and the scribes identified the town of Bethlehem to be the birthplace of the Messiah, King Herod told these men to go and seek out this child which they did. Our lesson then ends by informing us that God came to these men in a dream and told them not to return to Herod. These men are confronted with another change. They are told to avoid a ruthless king, which I have to wonder what they were thinking after that dream. You know, it's possible that they may be relieved that, they, that they're... Um, they may be relieved that they can avoid this king. At the same time, they also may be worried that they, would be get, that they would be caught and that they would experience the wrath of the king. So I could see, you know, in some ways they might be happy. In other ways, they're like, well, what if we get caught? You know, what, what happens then? Either way, no matter what they were thinking, they were open to God working in their lives. They were open to change, and they obeyed the dream. They were open to God working in their lives. Now, the same cannot be said for King Herod. King Herod loved the status quo. Life for him was very good, and he did not want to lose his power. That's something a lot of human beings cling to is power. When he hears about a newborn king of the Jews, he becomes frightened. Now, change can be scary. I, I truly, change definitely can be scary. And being afraid initially of a certain change is natural. And I do not believe that it's sinful. However, the appropriate response to that fear is to turn to God in prayer 
and then place our trust in God, that God will lead us. Herod does not do that. What's so tragic about the Christmas story is that Jesus was not trying to remove Herod from his throne. Sure, Jesus wanted Herod to change his ways, but he was not looking, Jesus was not looking for any kind of uh, earthly political power. He wasn't looking for earthly political power. But Herod, in his fear, and his fear and his unwillingness to be open to the change that God was bringing into the world, ordered the slaughter of all the children in Bethlehem who were two years old or younger. In the Lutheran Church and in other denominations, December 28th is a festival day called the Holy Innocents. So during the 12 days of Christmas, one of the festival days, we remember what Herod did. We call that the Holy Innocents. And again, we remember these, these, the murder of these children at the hands of Herod. Again, this, this was a needless slaughter. But Herod was not open to how God was working in his life and in the world. And, and so he was not open to how God was working in his life, and he ended up acting in a selfish and sinful way in order to maintain his temporary power on earth. So he closes himself in, off to God. He acts in a selfish and sinful way only for the sole purpose of maintaining his temporary earthly power. So being open to change is crucial for a Christian because God can shake up our lives. God will often call us to do things we do not want to do or that we think we cannot do. That's another thing. Sometimes God will call us to do something we, we think we cannot do. Throughout, throughout my entire ministry, I have often questioned my own abilities. I, I, have a, um, I have a tendency to compare myself to other pastors. And sometimes, you know, I'll think things like, you know, I wish I, I, wish I had the ability to, to give better prayers or that I was more intellectual, you know, that I was a, a, a great Greek and Hebrew scholar, you know, things like that. So I often compare myself to others and I think, oh, I'm lacking here and I'm lacking there and, and all of that. Um, so I, that's something that, that I kind of wrestle with. But then I have to remind myself that if God did not want me to be where I am, then I wouldn't be here. And that none of us are perfect. We all have strengths and weaknesses. What really matters is that we're trying to be faithful, that we're trusting that God will provide, that God will lead us. King Herod demonstrated zero trust in God. And his legacy in history is really, really is as a bad guy, as a sinner, as someone who teaches people what not to do. So we can learn from him, but he always teaches us what not to do. The wise men, on the other hand, are men who trusted God. It is very possible that if they were from the region we now call Jordan, that these men were familiar with Jewish prophecy. However, they were not Jews. They were not Israelites. And yet they demonstrated the ability to trust that God was in charge. They disobeyed a ruthless king because they believed it was more important to trust that God was leading them in the right direction. So, God will sometimes call us to do things we do not want to do or that we do not think we can do. We need to remember that God does not always call us to do easy things. So that, that is important. God does not always call us to do easy things. The journey of the wise men, for example, was not easy. At the same time, at the same time, God does not call us to do impossible tasks. 
And when we follow the direction of the Holy Spirit, we will find that God is calling us to do something good and something we can be proud to have done. So when we follow God, we look back on our actions. We're always happy about what we've done, which is not true when we follow our own selfish ways or follow uh, the will of the devil. Then we're usually ashamed of what we've done. But when we follow God, we can all, we're always pleased with what we've done. And we may also find, we may also find that what God is calling us to do is not that bad. For example, God was not after King Herod's earthly throne, or Jesus was not after King Herod's earthly th throne. It's true that Jesus wanted Herod to change his behavior. Jesus did not want Herod murdering people, for example. And if Herod would have been open to God's work, he would be remembered different, differently in history. So the work that God calls us to do is often challenging, so I'll admit to that, it's often challenging, but it's doable, it's good work, and it's often not as bad as we may imagine. So a lot of times when we're asked to do something, uh, we may think, oh, I can't do this, oh, this, this is just impossible. And a lot of times when we do it, it's like, oh, well, that, that wasn't a bad experience, or I learned a lot from that experience. So. Always remember, it's not always as bad as what it, it might be challenging, but it's, it's, it's something good. It's doable, it's good, and it's often not as, not, as, not as hard as we may have imagined. Well, my final point for today is that these wise men were truly wise men. Last month, someone in the community showed me a Christmas card, which I thought was fun. I really did think it was fun. If I remember correctly, the front of the card said, a virgin birth I can believe, but finding three wise men, come on. <laughs> then the inside of the card said, Christmas is a time for believing. So I, thought, I really did think it was a fun card. Um, it's one that I would be even willing to send out, because I, 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 I think it, it was a, a neat joke. <coughs> Excuse me. And I believe that God wants us to laugh once in a while. In fact, that's in the Bible. The book of Ecclesiastes says there's a time to laugh. Now, I'm not going to get into the debate about the differences between men and women. That's, you could talk about that later. <laughs> but I would like to emphasize that these magi were truly wise men. Not only were they open to the direction that God was leading them, but they also knelt down before the king of the world and presented him with their treasure. They knelt down before the king of the world and presented them with their treasure, presented him with their treasure. That's exactly what all human beings should be doing on a daily basis. We should continue to dedicate ourselves to the true Lord of the universe. We should worship Jesus. We should put him first in our lives. And we should commit ourselves to following his will. We too should be offering our treasure. Meaning we should be offering our time. We should be offering our talents to God. Now, we should always ask God for help in our lives. So our, our daily struggles and things, we should always come to God and ask for his help. But we need to remember that one, that God is in control and that part of our created purpose is to serve God. So I think some people kind of get the impression that, that God is a, uh, like a genie. God's there to grant our wishes. Now again, continue to ask for God's help in your life with your, with your struggles. But also remember that you're, we are called to also serve God, to do God's will. God is not just there to help us, but we're there. We're, we are created to be his servants, to be his workers. So in this new year, will God be asking you to make any changes? Will God be calling you to do something different this year? 
Well, it's possible. And again, as Christians, we should always be open to change. We should always be open to the work of the Holy Spirit. King Herod gives us a great example of someone who was not open to change or the work of God. Sure, none of us will be going to the extreme measures that Herod went, went to in order to keep the status quo. But by closing ourselves off to the work of God, we could be missing out on something truly great. The wise men, on the other hand, teach us many wonderful lessons. They teach us that Jesus is truly the king of the entire universe. I'm sorry, the entire world. He's king of the entire universe too, but king of the entire world. And he, calls, and he calls all human beings to bow before him and to offer their treasure. So the wise men, again, they're not Israelites. So it shows us that God is calling the whole world to bow before him and to offer their treasure. The wise men also teach us that when we are willing to kneel before God and offer our treasure, God will bless us and God will call us to do some great things in life. We may not become as famous as the wise men, but we can be assured that the work that God calls us to do is good work, which leads ourselves and others to the Savior of the world. Amen.
For our sake he was crucified on Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again with the scriptures. He descended into heaven at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and the Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Trusting in God's good news, a great joy for all people, we offer our prayers for ourselves, our neighbors, and the world God loves. Almighty God, enthroned forever, you love righteousness and hate wickedness. For our sakes, you sent your only begotten Son to suffer the wages of our sin, that we might be holy in your sight. As you have poured grace and salvation upon us, so anoint us also with the oil of gladness and the hope of everlasting life. Hear us, O God. Holy God, eternal light, you made Paul a minister according to the gift of your grace. Embolden our pastors to preach the unsearchable riches of Christ. Open our ears to hear and our hearts to believe their message that the King of Kings has given his life for us. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Heavenly Father, you prepared a place for your Son, Jesus, in the womb of the Virgin Mary and in the home of Mary and Joseph. Bless our homes and all who dwell in them, that your word would be heard and your mercy be shown therein. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. O Lord, bring an end to all threats of violence. Raise up leaders who will act with integrity, pursue justice, and follow your commands. Grant to all people the blessings of food, shelter, medical care, and safety, and sustain those whose duty it is to protect and defend. Hear us, O God. Give to the afflicted your comforting presence, relief in their suffering and healing according to your will. Sustain your servants who trust in you. And we especially pray for those who are known to this congregation. We lift up Irene, Mike, Jim, Stephanie, Isabella, Lana, Brandon, Zine, Mark, Connie, Harold, for the family of, of James Balker, and for all those we now name aloud are in our hearts. Marilyn Martin. Give hope to the weary and peace to the dying. Hear us, O God. Lord God, you brought the Magi of old to worship your Son, Jesus, and so you have brought us to worship him also. Receive our gifts and give us Christ in his body and blood, that we may return home according to your holy way. Hear us, O God. You have redeemed the lives of your faithful departed. Through the love of Christ, gather us into one body with them and reveal to us the mystery hidden for ages in the one who created all things. Hear us, O God. Abide with us, O God of mercy, and receive our prayers according to your abundant grace. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son. 
And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of, of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, and mercy for our fallen world you gave your only Son, that all those who believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. We give thanks to you for the salvation you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as he comes to us in his holy supper. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. And the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. be seated. body of Christ given for you. The 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 body of Christ given for you. body of Christ given for you. The 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 body of Christ given for you. 
the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Benjamin, may God bless you and may you continue to grow in God's love and grace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. 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 Body of Christ given for you. Marie, may God bless you and may you continue to grow in God's love and grace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. May God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. No, I think it's just Lois. You could put that back. We didn't need it. The body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Elton, the body of Christ given for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you. I invite the congregation to please rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. And let us pray. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. 
With your word in this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you and keep you. Jesus, grant you grace and truth. And the Spirit send peace upon your hearts, now and forever. Amen. Amen.